Taco, you still have your braids. Does she, how do I do it? Open your hand, hand up, put your fingers straight. Ah! <laughs> hello, hello, beautiful day on the Colorado Trail. I think it's day 26. And this is sort of a reverse Nero where we stayed in town last night, but we slept in and enjoyed half the day in town today and got back on the trail in the afternoon. Hey, it's me earlier today and I am in town, Lake City, very tiny town, drinking some coffee and getting packed up, ready to hit the trail. It is my birthday today and my husband somehow managed to get me flowers, even though this tiny town does not have a florist and we're in the middle of nowhere. I put them in this coffee cup because that was the closest thing I could find to a vase. Thank you, Luke, I love you. And I think before we hit the trail, we should probably get birthday brunch. All right, this is your happy birthday. birthday brunch, cheers. Cheers. So we had like 24 hours in town, which we don't normally do, which was awesome. So we got a lot done. I went to a laundromat and actually got to wash and dry all of my clothes, except for what I was wearing. And I washed my hair. The hotel we stayed in had like almost a full kitchen. So there was a bottle of dish soap, which sounds crazy, but most of the hotels have two in one shampoo and conditioner and I'm not supposed to put conditioner in my hair. So I don't like to use that. Also, it's usually a tiny little travel bottle, but dish soap, <laughs> you know, Dawn dish soap, they like wash the ducks with it. And so, yeah, I washed my hair <laughs> with dish soap last night. It had been since Breckenridge was the last time I washed it so I don't know two weeks three weeks it needed it okay enough about town we're back on the trail we're only doing like 9.4 or so today let's go So today we are hiking up into the San Juans, which is known to be, I think, the most difficult section of the Colorado Trail. I'm not positive though if it's more difficult than Collegiate West, I think it is, but also one of the most rewarding sections. So it's going to be four days through here to get to Silverton will be the next town stop. Let me introduce you to the San Juans. fascinated with the sheep <laughs> we had to get a lot of liters of water out of this puddle we're almost to camp home for the night Evan is somewhere back there so I'm still not hungry from brunch. I didn't eat anything since we started hiking and I really don't feel like cooking dinner because I'm not that hungry. So, I guess I'll have a granola bar. The heaviest one. It's raining. And I'm gonna start late today. Oh, my head doesn't even fit in this. So, Evan left at the normal time, and I decided I would rather wait for the rain to stop because it was supposed to stop. So, I was going to start a little bit late. 
Anyway, by 8 o'clock, it still was not stopping and did not look like it was going to stop, so I finally decided I had to suck it up. Anyway, I put on this beautiful poncho, emergency poncho that I've carried forever and never used, but I felt like today was going to be the day. It's freaking freezing. It's raining. After I leave this little spot, I'm going to be above tree line all day. I think we're above tree line for 31 miles. And I'm going to hit the high point today, so I'm going to be over 13,000 feet. So I do have a rain jacket, but rain jackets really just don't work that great. So I felt like the poncho was a good idea. Probably should have put it over the pack. And then it might have covered more of my arms, but... 18 miles, wicked late start. Let's go. There's a sheep on the trail. So, uh, this is the trail. <laughs> hey, cowboy, can you do something about this? <laughs> I don't know if you can really see this because it's so rainy. This is so surreal. I think I'm well over 12,000 feet and I'm hiking in a cloud with hundreds and hundreds of sheep. I'm sorry, I know you're probably sick of the sheep, but seriously, we're hurting them down the trail. Okay, the sheep finally stopped hiking with us. <laughs> that was so cool. Holy crap. Come on. I know I look ridiculous. <laughs> my hands are cold. <laughs> I'm sweating under all my rain gear. It's like miserable. I am over 13,000 feet now, just barely, but we're not quite at the high point yet. We got another three miles and like maybe 200 feet. Yeah. can't see anything. So, highest point on the Colorado Trail. Me and Evan did actually go higher than this on Mount Albert, but still, this feels like a big win today. What do you think, Evan? Well, I'm glad it's not raining anymore while I'm hiking. And it warmed up. Yeah, it's nice now. That's all I think right now. <laughs> anything but this is the top of another climb we'll pass just under 13,000 feet and I think we got two more little ones to do
All right, we made it to sort of a camp. <laughs> My tent was still a little wet from this morning. Everything is wet now, as you can hear. But I did get set up. And we are above tree line, by the way. Um, I don't know if I said earlier, but there's a 30 plus mile stretch above tree line. So we had no choice. So here we are, kind of up against the bushes. Seriously, isn't this so beautiful to wake up to? <laughs> I really should have filmed my morning routine this morning. I kind of regret not doing it. Um, we camped at 12,500 feet last night <laughs> in the rain, which overnight stopped and turned to ice on our tents. So I was like shaking ice off of my tent when I was packing up, but I was so cold. My hands were just frozen. I couldn't deal with filming, so sorry. Also, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but my lips are like bleeding, I think. I didn't even realize it until I was putting my chapstick on, but last week we thought they were chapped and then we realized how painful it was that they were like blistered from sunburn. So then we got new chapstick with SPF in it. Whatever, long story, you don't care, but I'm sorry if it looks gross, they hurt. Evan has his sleeping bag over his shoulders. Hey Evan, what's up with the sleeping bag? Oh, I'm drawing it out as I walk. <laughs> I've seen this in books, old books, but never in a YouTube video, so I want to start a trend. Straight up this morning, almost back to 13,000. The rest of today is just gonna be a little ups and downs, so we're back up to 12,996. 13,10. No, not according to Far Out. What the fuck are you looking at? <sighs> Click on the waypoint. How are you above the high point? <laughs> Click on the waypoint. We're above the trailer. Click right now. on it. Oh. Uh, yeah. 12,996. But see us? We're higher. That's. Technicality. By the way, we have less than 100 miles left on the trail. We just hit that like half a mile ago. Okay, so we believe these are called pikas, North American pikas. Evan was the one to first tell me about them. And we saw them occasionally in Collegiate West. They live at really high elevation, but they're so quick and they're so shy that it was impossible to film one. So I kept thinking I should probably just at least mention them that we had seen a few so you guys could Google it because they're so cute. They look like little Furbies. They're like so fluffy and adorable and small and make that little squeak noise. But then they live at like gangster <laughs> elevation and they live in the rocks, like these rocks. That's like where you see them, on the only place you see them. It's ice melt from the snow. It's so cool. Oh my god. Where'd you start? Denver. Uh, can they be pet? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. Slowly, okay, approach. So there is, yeah, right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I look funny. Chocho, come here. It's okay. Hi. Your name's Chocho. No. I know my hair looks funny. Chocho? Yeah, and put her on her neck. Don't go for her nose. 
It's okay. It's okay. Easy. So close. So close. <laughs> They're young, actually, too. They're very young. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's so not even. She's. Hi. She's. She's four right. and a half. So. so how far are you going with them? We're, well, we just went to uh, El Dorado Lake. So we live close. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Sure, we're gonna get some weather today. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks. It's starting to look a little stormy. And we're still above tree line since yesterday. When we left camp, I guess. I think it's 31 miles, so a couple more miles above tree line. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, this is where the Colorado Trail and the Continental Divide Trail split off from each other. CDT, maybe someday. Colorado Trail today. Been hearing a little thunder off in that direction. 0.6 till we head downhill. Unreal. All right, I guess so far we beat the storm. Heading downhill, now at least we can run if I have to. in a while. We are now back below tree line. Also, paint drops. Okay, the rain finally started and I decided to use my poncho in an effort to keep my pack dry. I don't know why I was wearing my pack on the outside of the poncho the other day. It stopped raining, home for the night, about to have dinner by the fire, compliments of Joel and Evan, we've got a pond and a taco. What was your favorite part of today? Just barely beating the storm, but doing it successfully. Joel, what was... Spoiling, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> While we wait for Joel, my favorite part of today, although it was beautiful views all day, was finally catching the pika on <laughs> camera after weeks of drying. That's my second, second favorite part of the day. You've been at that for weeks. Okay, so my favorite part of the day was um, seeing how good of a horse I have. Some of the inclines we did, or the declines we did, were so crazy, and she just took them in stride, so I'm pretty happy. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, did you? It was scary to watch, but cool. <laughs> So yesterday I didn't mention because I didn't like get it on video and I thought it wasn't really a big deal. But yesterday midday I slipped and fell and my leg kind of like one leg went behind me and it hurt my knee in the moment. But I thought I just needed to walk it off. So I hiked the rest of the day on it pretty much fine. It felt fine other than you know once in a while if I just like turned weird or something. Anyways then last night at camp after sitting for a while and then trying to stand back up, I realized it was really bothering me. And then today, it seems to be really bothering me. I'm hiking right now, I've just started and actually walking feels okay. It's more just like squatting down or turning or whatever. So I only have 80 something miles to go. I think it's gonna be fine, but I guess we'll see. Today though, only Eight and a half miles, and then it's a town day. We're going into Silverton to resupply, and this is our last town stop before the end. Morning, Taco.
Wait, is that the trail? So I guess there's a train that goes from Durango to Silverton and this is it? In the middle of the mountains. So good news. My knee just keeps feeling better and better. The more that I hike on it, I'm not even really babying it now. I really don't think it's swollen or anything. It just hurt this morning anytime I would like crouch down or like when I was packing up, like turning around inside my tent, stuff like that. We are almost to town, or almost to where we're gonna hitch into town. And once again, cowboy can't hitch into town with a horse. So before we get to the road crossing, there's actually a campground off the trail. So he's gonna go to the campground and kind of do a Nero there. And maybe we'll see him tomorrow. Bye, Joel. Enjoy your Nero at the campground. Yeah, enjoy your town. <laughs> Bye, Taco. Man, so pretty. All right, we've made it to Mollus. Mollus? Mollus, past summit, elevation 10, 910. And now we're gonna hitchhike into Silverton with a fly. I made it to Silverton. We are at the Avon Hotel and Hostel. Yeah, this is a wicked cute town. It's kind of like, I feel like I went back in time, but we've reached the platter already, I showered. We're still gonna go out to dinner and we gotta do laundry and video stuff, all things. But happy to be here, the last town stop. I can't believe this is almost over. So I'm gonna end this video here and I will see you on the next one, the last one.